when Half-Life 2 was released back in 2004. Its character animation quickly grabbed attention. The faces of background characters shifted with a subtlety. Most games of that era simply couldn't manage in real time. Eyebrows lifted unevenly, and lips curled into smirks or twitched mid-sentence, and subtle expressions blended naturally into speech. This was made possible by a real-time facial system that Valve called Flax, built on a shapey foundation entirely in soft image. As you can see, the Flux system was Valve's in-engine method of facial animation, which is a way to blend multiple vortex-based shape targets or flexes to create expressions in real time. And here is the interesting thing. Instead of baking facial movement into animation clips, Flux allowed the source engine to dynamically combine dozens of facial shapes at runtime. Each Flux represented a small facial action, like a brow raise, cheek puff, or lip curl, and the system layered them together based on scripted events, in addition to voice lines or player interaction. Oh, do be careful. The collaboration between Valve and Softimage defined Half-Life's two entire production process, and the roots of that partnership went back actually a decade. You see, between 1993 and 1996, Softimage gained traction in film and VFX, introducing facial shape animation through its actor module. It became popular with some Japanese studios, but was still a niche tool in Western game development that began to change when Avid released Soft Image 1.0 in 2000, which was a complete rebuild focused on character work, animation, and integrated modeling. By 2003, as Valve ramped up development on Half-Life 2, they chose Soft Image as their only 3D animation software. Everything from props to characters was modeled, rigged, and animated in Softimage. What made this work so well was how closely Softimage's shape animation system aligned with Valve's needs of facial animation. Morph targets sculpted in XSI translated directly into the flex shapes used by the source engine, and with its non destructive workflows and animation mixer, Valve's artists could revise characters quickly without rebuilding rigs or redoing facial logic. The strategy of Valve worked. They approached facial animation through a system inspired by the Facial Action Coding System, or FAX for short. On a side note, this was developed in behavior psychology to describe expressions as combinations of individual muscle movements or action units. So Valve took the smart approach. Rather than building full face expressions, they broke down emotions into small emotions, like brow pinches, cheek lifts, lip corner pulls, and so on. Softimage let them sculpt each of these as a separate target, then layer them live, and refine combinations without breaking the whole system. Artists could adjust how shapes blend together, preview results, and stay flexible throughout the production, and exporting shapes into the source engine used Valve's custom VTA format, which stored just a vertex offset per morph. This kept file size as small, and playback efficient. In fact, Softimage's SDK gave Valve the ability to write clean exporters, while its scripting tools made it easy to automate naming and batching, so artists could stay in Softimage from start to finish, without offloading tasks to pipeline engineers. On top of that, Valve built FacePoser, a GUI-based sequencer that let animators keyframe flex shapes and drive lip sync from audio and refine emotional beats. The system analyzed WAV files, generated phenom shapes, and let artists layer additional motion. Since the shapes were authored in XSI, playback in engine matched what was sculpted in the tool. This pipeline was extended to the community when Half-Life 2 shipped in 2004. Over the next few years, Softimage continued building on that momentum. In 2005, it unveiled Face Robot, a dedicated facial rigging tool designed for soft tissue deformation and anatomical realism. We actually made a video about this tool, if you want to check it out. Face Robot 1.5 even added a game export mode, converting its high-end setups into bone-driven animation compatible with real-time engines. Meanwhile, Valve kept expanding the flex system. Team Fortress 2 actually exaggerated facial shapes to fit its stylized look, but used the same pipeline. And across all the different projects, sculpting still happened in Softimage, and the Vertex Delta export along the same path into the engine. By 2008, Autodesk had acquired Softimage from Avid, 
and the software would be sadly discontinued a few years later. But its impact on facial animation pipelines and the flux system it helped enable remains one of the most important animation tools in the game development industry. Other developers paid attention, and the methods Valve used became more common as teams explored facial animation in greater depth. Shape rigs based on individual muscle movements began replacing older rigs that relied on jawbones or simple blends between preset faces. As you might expect, middleware companies saw a growing demand for tools like this and began filling in the gaps. FaceFX was the first major example. It was built to automate audio to shape mapping, much like FacePoser. It integrated into Unreal Engine and other 3D animation software, supporting both morph targets and bone based setups. FaceFX wasn't a clone of FacePoser, but it offered similar features for studios that didn't have the engineering bandwidth to build their own solution from scratch. At the same time, Softimage developed FaceRobot. This was a higher end solution aimed at film and high budget games allowing animators to place anatomical landmarks on a mesh and generate deformation systems that mimics flesh and skin movement. This took some of the guesswork out of building facial rigs, especially for expressions driven by subtle compressions or surface tension. Valve kept refining flax in Team Fortress 2. They exaggerated expressions to match the stylized visuals, but the underlying system remained the same. Flax was shape-based, keyframe-driven, and controlled through the same tool chain as Half-Life 2. When Valve released Source Filmmaker, they extended the system further, giving creators access to the timeline and flex controllers for animation, in addition to sound and lighting. At every stage, the workflow stayed tied to XSI, and artists could sculpt shapes in Softimage, export vertex deltas, and sequence them through the flex timeline. The tools Valve relied on in Softimage shaped every part of that experience. XSI Shape Editor let artists build a wide set of expressions at once and reuse them across multiple characters. Since the human characters in Half-Life 2 shared a common base mesh, Valve could generate variety through controlled offsets, bigger noses, stronger jaws, narrower cheeks, while keeping the same flex shapes active. That meant the facial rig logic didn't need to change, only the mesh inputs. As shape-based animation became more familiar, other studios started building rigs using similar concepts. Some used morph targets, others converted the same actions into bone movement. But the structure followed Valve's lead. Facial rigs moved away from the macro poses and towards smaller layered adjustments. And the industry began shifting towards rigs built with composable parts. This approach has remained common. It's built into character tools across the board now from metahuman to arcade face tracking to custom rigs in Unreal Engine in addition to other places. The idea of authoring detailed facial shapes once and controlling them through timeline or audio input has become the default way to think about facial animation. Softimage itself was retired in 2014 after Autodesk faced it out, but the workflows it enabled, especially in the flex system, are still relevant. Many of the techniques for shape organization Nonlinear blending and clean export came directly from how XSI handled character animation. The tools may have changed, but the patterns remained. And there you have it, guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to this channel to receive more videos like this. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.